Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just repeating the sound while we're preparing the studio for broadcast tonight. Welcome to another edition of the Den and Out program. Coming to you today, the 18th of February, 2020. Today is welcome you all. Thank 
All right, family, um, again, a warm good evening um, to everybody. Today, the 18th of February, 2020, coming again on the Den and Out program, I'm your host and presenter, Prince Henry Kroma, wishing everybody a pleasant good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. This is just another broadcast, and hopefully we will do them for probably an hour, a plan of go over an hour, honestly. So let we begin straight away by asking Fambulem for share the video. Please share, let, let us share, let's not be selfish. We're talking about issues of um, state um, and country. I want to talk about a few things today. So it's a collection of issues, probably um, three, four, five. And um, for start with, Honestly, I want to congratulate the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of Sierra Leone, who happens to be head of state of the Republic, His Excellency Retired Brigadier Julius Mada Bio, and um, the Chief of Staff of the Sierra Leonean Armed Forces. Um, I understand that today is Armed Forces Day in Sierra Leone, and I therefore want to use the occasion for commend once more the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, who doubles up as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Sierra Leone, retired Brigadier Julius Mada Dio, and the gallant men and women of the armed forces of Sierra Leone on this special occasion of Armed Forces Day. Just briefly before I move on, um, I just want to give a short background behind um, the armed forces of um, Sierra Leone. And um, it's obvious that the Armed Forces of Sierra Leone is located, the headquarters is located in Moe Town. There's a building, a beautiful building, I think within my background. Unfortunately, um, I search for a more thorough and proper image for the HQ, the headquarters of the Armed Forces of Sierra Leone, ISLAF. A very beautiful building, I believe, constructed by the Chinese back in the 80s but this is the best that I could find. I hope we we'll all take this as um, an obligation for try for take a thorough photo 
of um, this impressive building, Nakokril, housing the headquarters of the Sierra Leone military, so that we were able to put on a Google, so we were able to download um, an iconic image of the headquarters of the Sierra Leonean armed forces. Um, the armed forces basically was formed or came into being um, as we know them in its present state, although it don't go through one or two changes as an institution due to the war back in the 90s in which they asked for funds. But we would like to put a date on the foundation of this important institution, the armed forces, which was um, found in 61, I believe. Of course, that was just about around independence. So if you put 1961 around that day, transformation in which the country acquired independence and therefore the formative stages of its institutions free from imperial colonial rule will make sense that in 1961, the armed forces of Sierra Leone, as it will be known in an independent sense, was formed. The data where they get, I don't know whether this is accurate, need for double check, and you can help me, is as we speak, there is um, over 13,000 active personnel of the armed forces of Sierra Leone. And in budget, as established back in, um, I believe that was 2012, 2015, did read a report, not sure now, but it was over 10 million US dollars, over 10 million US dollars, okay? And um, this particular, and also to the chief of staff of the Defense Force, I want to congr congratulate you, sir, along with the head of state on this occasion of the Armed Forces Day. It's really significant. So when the Armed Forces of the Republic was formed back in 1961, in principal responsibility, which he gave for Abu Ghid, came 1990, when the um, war, the civil war, took place, was basically the responsibility for the protection, the security of the territorial integrity of the Republic of Sierra Leone. It promised for defend the national interest of Sierra Leone within the framework of a particular obligation, international obligations. You know, say we sign up to many, many obligations as to how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, okay? So internally, externally, there are obligations which we are entitled to. When I say entitled to, we suppose for observe the obligations then they. So the Sierra Leone military, a very powerful institution within the country, did attain or came into being in 1961. But then in 1990, or shortly before 1990, when it was um, it became battled in two or three major activities, as we can recall, or two in particular. One of them would be the Congo War. I remember when I was a boy, when um, um, people were being deployed, armed forces personnel were being deployed. And I'm telling you this, uh, Fambulem, the military was so respectable. I mean, if you see Sojaman Atong, which was very difficult for see, and if you go around, you know, your Moray town, when they went inside them barracks, they are there. It's unbelievable. I hope those pictures, those photos of the time, I'll be able to find them because as a small boy, there were occasional times, you know, when we went around those places, because even though those places were there, not all the time you were fortunate to go around there because it was special, trust me. The area was so clean, it was so protected, it was so responsible, it was so immaculate, it was so significant. The institution being so powerful that from a distance, you have to respect them. I mean, even at the gate where we spend Monday on guard, yeah? That place, they will set him up alone in the entire surrounding. I mean, it's so magnificent that you're not just able to offend the courage for go further because there was this eerie feeling about this place. And so your man will team up. The, if you see how clean, if you see how disciplined, if you see how it team up, if you see in, in surrounding, if you see in uniform, in the bone, they call on the bone, 
uh, um, the line where you don't iron, where you don't starch in uniform. I think I'll be military police them. They be goodness me. Anyway, that was then. So we they talk about the now. So anyway, the country became tested. Its military became tested in two wars. When I've been the Congo crisis, where they've been deployed, uh, uh, um, the military, the highly political crisis, and they've been sent with military. The thing we, as we understand from the history books now and declassified documents, we just go involved in war, which um, we should have fought the other way. Unfortunately, we went the wrong way. And then if we now remember the double, double usu, uh, 